Now we'll talk about decoders and encoders. So first we'll start with decoders. A n to 2 to the power n decoder is basically a multiple output combinational network with n inputs and 2 to the n output lines. Each possible input condition only for each possible input condition only one output will be active at a logic one. So you can consider a decoder as a minterm generator with each output corresponding to exactly one minterm. And this is how it would look like. So you have n inputs right here. And each one of these outputs is active. Only one of them is active at any one time. And because only one of them is active at any one time, each one of these is considered a minterm. And it represents a combination of these inputs. So let's look at a two to four decoder. Two because I have two inputs. Four because I have four outputs right here. And if you look at the truth table for it right here, you will see that here's my two inputs. I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And that represents 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now the outputs, I will have four outputs because I have them up here. And the subscript of the output represents the min term that it represents from the input, that it sees on the input. So you will see Y0 will be active when 0, 0 comes in on the input. Y1 will be active when 0, 1 comes in on the input. Y2 will be active when 1, 0 comes in on the input. And Y3 will be active when 1, 1 comes in on the input. So each one, each output will be active based on its subscript. So Y0 is active when the 0 comes in, Y1 is active when the 1 comes in, etc. So because each output only has one output active at any one time, so there's only one 1 over here, which is at min term 0, so it's X bar Y, X1 bar, X0 bar. This one is only one over here, so it is X1 bar, X0 right there and so on so you figure out the equation of each one of those outputs and then you build the circuit this circuit is basically placed in a box like this and that's the box we saw before that's basically the unit we saw before and this is a two to four decoder. Now any decoder will have an enable input and the enable input basically tells this unit to either function as a decoder or not to work at all. So when the enable here this is a straight line coming in so when the enable is zero all the outputs yi all these outputs will be zero they won't function. But when the enable is one, when this is a one, then we are saying decoder function as a decoder. So then the yi will be the decoded outputs like we saw in the truth table before. Now, how about if we wanted a three to eight decoder? So now we want three inputs and eight outputs. But what if I wanted to design it using a two to four? So this is a two to four, and this is another two to four. So if I wanted a three to eight using a two to four, I have x2, x1, x0, where my x2 is my most significant bit, and there's x1, x0. And if I looked at my combinations, this is how my combinations are, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 
0111. Now if I look at this, you'll see there's four combinations right there. And there's another four combinations right there. And then you'll see there's a division right here where x is 2. This four combinations are happening. And when x2 is when x2 is 0, these four combinations are happening. When x2 is 1, these four combinations are happening. So it looks like I can figure out a way, I need to figure out a way where when I have x is, x2 is 0, I want x1, x0 to decode. And when x2 is a 1, I want x1, x0 to decode. So I take x1, x0, put them into a 2 to 1, 2 to 4 decoder. And I take them also and take them into a second 2 to 1, 2 to 4 decoder. Right there and right there. And then I can take x2 and then take that input to the enable of each decoder. Now, when it's a zero, it should enable one encoder, decoder. And when it's a one, it should enable the other. So zero through an inverter will turn to a one, will enable this decoder. And this one won't work. So basically for the first four inputs right here, these four outputs will be working. That's why it's subscript 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then if it turns into a 1, this will be a 0, which is the second four combinations right here. And this will be a 1. So then this will be on and this will be off which means that I'm going to be working with outputs 4, 5, 6, and 7, which are these last four outputs right here. So that's how you design a 3 to 8 decoder using only 2 to 4 decoders. You take the most significant input and use that as your controlling input between the two decoders because your input order was x1, x2, x1, x0. And here's the truth table laid out. So you see your x2, x1, x0, and you'll see your y outputs where the first decoder controls, the first decoder is enabled here, and these are the outputs that are active and when the second decoder is enabled these are the outputs that are active. Now if I wanted to do a 4 to 16 decoder I do the same thing. I have x3, x2, x1, x0. These two will be my output controlling inputs. These two will be the two inputs that select which one of these output decoders will function. So when this is 0, 0, it will select the first one. When this is 0, 1, it will be selecting the second one. When this is 1, 0, it will select the third one. And when this is 1, 1, it will select the fourth one. And that's how that will work. So if you look over here, there's my x1, x0. It goes and gets connected here. It gets connected here, gets connected here, and gets connected there. And then I have a fourth, a fifth 2 to 4 decoder where x3, x2 is connected. And the outputs of these are the ones that get connected to the enable. Because then when I have... 0, 0, that should enable my first decoder. So that's a 1. It enables my first decoder, so I get my first four outputs. When the input is a 0, 1, a 0, 
1. This one is a 1. It should enable my second decoder and these outputs function and so on. And here's how it looks like when you have it as a truth table. Here's the second part of the truth table in which decoder is enabled. So here's the other applications we have for decoders. You can use the decoder as a data decoder or device decoder. You can also use it as a circuit synthesizer, um, meaning a midterm generator, or you can use it as a display decoder. So if we look at um, its use as data or address decoder, it's used in computer memories and input output systems. So for each of two to the n devices, um, if we look at these as memory cells or input output ports, it is assigned a unique n bit binary number or address. And decoder decodes the n bit binary number or the address to activate the appropriate device. So if we look at here, um, over here across, this is the binary word. And right here, you have n address digits. Right here, you have the actual address. And you can locate one of two to the n binary words using that address. So an 8-bit address actually can provide you with 256 words. You can also use it to create midterms. Um, so it's used as a midterm generator. For example, if I have a function of CBA is a midterm, it's a sum of midterms 0, 2, 3, and 5. So since this is a sum of midterms, I can just use a 3 to 8 decoder. I put 1 as my enable. I put CBA as my inputs. And I know I'm collecting 0, 2, 3, and 5. So I take wires out of 0, 3, 2, and 5. And because it is a sum of midterms, I just take them through an OR gate right here. And I've got my function of CBA. It's that simple. If I wanted to do a max term generation, it is a product of max terms. Because it's a product of max terms, I'm going to have to use an active low output um, decoder. This is again a 3 to 8 decoder. Now if I didn't have a 3 to 8 decoder, I would have had to create a 3 to 8 decoder using 2 to 4s. And because this is ZYX, so I'm going to put ZYX X in this order again I have to enable my decoder or it's not going to function I have 0 2 3 and 5 so I'm going to take 0 2 3 and 5 and I put them take them through an AND gate and that's my function so looking at a synthesis example let's say we have a function x bar y or x y bar in a truth table that is just um, 0, 1, 1, 0. So we have a 1 over here and a 1 over there in the K-map. It's also min term 1, min term 2, or max term 0, max term 3. So for min terms, you can use the OR gate if the outputs of the decoder are active high or the NAND gate if the outputs are active low. And we could use, just use the reverse De Morgan to get this expression to verify basically this statement. Now for max terms, you can use an AND gate if the outputs are active low or you can use a NOR gate if the outputs are active high. You really just need to memorize those two slides to know what gates to use when.
Now another application is to use it as a display decoder. Um, here's a true table for a seven segment display. If we just look at this, this is a BCD to seven segment. BCD is binary coded decimal. So these are numbers zero all the way to nine. And zero to nine can be displayed in a seven segment display A through G. So for example, this is A through G um, and I wanna display the number zero. So I would light up all the LEDs except G. So then that would be all the LEDs are lit up to provide the digit zero except G. Um, one, I would have B, C lit up and everything else not lit and so on. Um, for two, uh, C and F are not lit up. So we're lighting up this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and so on. So this is how you would light up the LEDs on a seven segment display. So this would be the true table. Um, you probably not be given the true table like this and you'd have to complete it. Um, here we chose to do B and C someone might have decided to light up F and E for one instead of B and C. So I might have a different table than someone else. So here's a display decoder. Now I could decide to um, complete this table and build this using and or nots or NAND and NOR gates only. I would require to put these, K these two tables into K maps. So I'd have seven K maps minimize them using um, the K maps, group all the K maps, minimize them, and then build the circuits using AND or NOT or NAND and NOR circuits. That would be a lot of work. That would be a big circuit, huge circuit, maybe 12 or 13 chips if I didn't really do a good job of minimizing. Could probably take it down to nine chips. So that's a lot of work. Now I could also use decoders to build this same circuit. Now if I look at it over here, um, A was actually max term one ended with max term four. So I could take an AND gate and just take one and four and take them through an AND gate. B was actually max term five and max term six. So I can also take five and six and take them through an AND gate and take them through B and produce B. Now I could do that with all those and I could literally use one decoder and create my whole circuit using one decoder and a few gates. Um, and that would produce my whole circuit. Seven gates, one decoder, and I could create my whole BCD to seven segment decoder. So the next thing we wanna talk about is encoders, which is the inverse of a decoder. Um, they're useful if one of several devices is signaling computer by putting a one on a wire from the device. Uh, the encoder produces the device number that, that produced that signal. So for, decode, for encoders, it's the reverse. Exactly one input is on at any one time. Decoders, we had exactly one output is on at one time. Encoders, exactly one input is on at any one time. Here's the four to two encoders. Um, so you have four inputs. Only one of those input is on at any one time. And then the output gives you the code of the subscript of the input that was active at that time. So here, the one that was active was subscript zero. So the code on the output is zero, zero. Here, the one that was active was a one. So the code on the output is a one. Here, the one that was active was a two. So the code on the output is a two. The one that was active was a three. So the code that came out was a three. So it tells me who basically was active at that point in time. And the output gives me that code. Now, I have two outputs, I have two truth tables, um, and I put them into a K-map and I get the equation for them. So I have Y1, group the ones, get the equation for that. Y2, Y0, group the ones, get the equation for that. Um, we group the ones of a K-map the same way we've shown how in the past. These are the two equations I have. Um, 
build a circuit and that would be my encoder circuit. Quite a simple circuit. We have something else called a priority encoder and the priority encoder allows basically multiple inputs to be active then at one time. Uh, now the regular encoder, like I said, only one input is active at any one time, but a priority could allow you multiple inputs to be active and then it sends the binary value of the subscript of the input line that has the highest priority. So the highest priority is then assigned to the highest subscript. So here we have X3, X2, X1, X0. So X3 will have the highest priority. So when we're sending, we're going to forget about uh, enable and the gate select now. I'll put enable and the gate select. But X3 has the highest subscript. So if we're looking at this, um, let's, let's look at this input right here. So X3 is on and X0 is on. So the code that will be output will be 1, 1. Because X3 has higher priority than X0. So if both are active, then the code 3 will be sent. So you'll see whenever X3 is on, it doesn't matter what other input is active, the code that comes out will always be a three. So that's why all the way down here, the priority went to X3 and that was the code that was active, uh, sent out. Same over here, when X2 was active, regardless of what other code was sent, what other input was active, the code that was sent on the other side was two. When one was active, the code what was sent was one. Now here, you'll see there's two zeros that were sent. When nothing was sent and was when X zero was sent. So on the receiving side, how do you distinguish that a zero was sent and that was an actual code and a zero was sent when no code was sent? This is where these two help you distinguish. Gate select and active low in, uh, output enable. These two help the user then look. If gate select is zero and output enable inverse, output enable is a one, then you don't take this code. But if it's a zero and a one, if output enable is a zero and gate select is a one, then you take whatever's on A1 and A0. And that's just the chip of the priority encoder. This is how the priority encoder chip is set up. Now, having seen that, I have four outputs to this circuit. I would need a K-map for A1, a K-map for A0, and I need the gate select equation and an, an EO equation. Now, the gate select and EO only has one, one on each one, so I can just take that min term and, and use it. And those are the two equations for those. And for the A1, A0, I group the ones and those are the two equations there. And you could build the circuit and then you've got those equations. So next class, uh, we'll look at memory devices and synchronous sequential circuit analysis. Because um, right now we've finished everything we need to know about um, uh, combinational circuits. So from now on, we'll, we'll start looking into memory devices. Uh, you need to really know everything about combinational because we use all that knowledge and then add to it uh, memory and sequential. So you really have to get a hold of all the combinational stuff.